Let's hear now from Alexander Betts, who's a professor in refugee and forced migration studies from the University of Oxford. He's uh, with us now live from uh, Oxford. Professor, we said uh, just a few moments ago that the, uh, these two tragic events, uh, uh, these people who've died in the Mediterranean on top of the thousands who've, who've died attempting to make that crossing, and that the, the poor people in, in, in the truck uh, in, in Austria ought to shock uh, politicians into some sort of action. Will it? These are really shocking events. People are dying in Europe and on the border of Europe. And while Europe's squabbling about what to do, people are dying. And Europe's struggling to come up with an adequate solution. It needs to do much more than it's currently doing. The refugee issue in Europe, and this is a refugee crisis predominantly, is something that it's the first time Europe has faced a mass influx of refugees from outside the region. And politicians are passing it around like a hot potato, failing to take decisive, coordinated action. All right, so what sort of coordinated action is needed right now? I think we need a comprehensive refugee policy for Europe, and it has to be a global policy. It needs three levels of action. Firstly, we need to show better solidarity with regions of origin. 95% of the world's refugees are in countries that neighbor conflict and crisis. Three and a half million Syrian refugees, for instance, are in Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan. We need to recognize that and support it, not only with humanitarian assistance, but development assistance that enables those countries to cope better. Secondly, we need coordination and responsibility sharing in Europe. 300,000 people have arrived in Greece and Italy this year. We have 28 member states. 300,000 divided by 28 should be manageable. But the current system places responsibility on frontline states like Italy and Greece and leaves others further away from the Mediterranean and the Western Balkans with less responsibility. We need renewed cooperation. And thirdly and finally, on a national level, politicians have to show moral courage and political leadership. They have to articulate to their publics who's coming from where and why we have a moral responsibility to protect refugees and why we should do so ethically, legally, why we should recognize their socioeconomic contributions, and importantly, why we have to show solidarity globally to support countries that host the majority of the world's refugees. Two and a half thousand people have died so far this year alone trying to cross the Mediterranean. Why hasn't all of this happened before now? These are shocking numbers, and somehow politicians in many European countries are caught between a political language that's anti-immigration at the domestic level and the need to show external solidarity. Now, there are some countries that are showing leadership. Germany is an exception in this debate. Sweden is an exception. And we've seen Angela Merkel rightly praised by Barack Obama this week. But countries that are further away, perhaps like the UK, are showing a relatively hysterical response about comparatively small numbers of people and they need to do more to recognize the rights of refugees and they need to take their electorates and publics with them to explain what's going on. The breakdown really is at a European level. 28 member states are failing to cooperate and with the exception of Germany there's just not enough leadership. How do you, you get through to the governments then on a, on a national level? The British response for example put it, putting up fences, I mean that's not the right mm. response is it? No, I mean, absolutely not. Militarized solutions won't work. Building fences won't work. The reality is we need to recognize most people who are coming at the moment are from refugee-producing countries. Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. We have obligations to those people. And it means that we need to recognize that, articulate it, explain it to the general public, and then coordinate so we have fair responsibility sharing. But that requires honesty and bravery by our elected politicians. I, 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 we're rapidly running out of time here. I want to put two final questions to you. If you could sort of answer them both in one answer, mm. I'd, be, I'd be very grateful. These 71 people who, who died in the truck, uh, obviously that was a people smuggling operation involved in that. To, to what extent does people smuggling need mm. to be tackled here by, uh, by governments? And how... Uh, you, you talk about, uh, about governments needing to, 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 uh, to apply a more coordinated response. How do they sell that to a sceptical public? Hmm. I think the smuggling issue is a, it, it's not the cause of migration. It's a symptom of an underlying reason why many people seek to come to Europe. And most smugglers are actually not large criminal networks. They're small operators. They're preying on vulnerable people. But to address the problem, we've got to deal with the root causes of refugee movements and ensure we provide legal ways in which refugees can access European territory. 
At the moment, we don't have that. If we offered, say, humanitarian visas to refugees at embassies around the world to travel legally, we wouldn't have these problems. That's the way to put smugglers out of business. I think, really, coordination is not taking place, in part because of skepticism. In the UK, for instance, the two biggest issues where there's public skepticism are Europe and immigration, and these are combined in one. But we've really got to work together within Europe through regional cooperation, but also more broadly through international cooperation. Professor, really good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed. Alexander Betts there, Professor in uh, Refugee and Thank Forced you. Migration Studies at the University of Oxford.